Welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express live on SABC3. It's a Tuesday morning and we've been off to a feel good start of note. Wow, such inspiration here in the studio. People who've come together to change the lives of children who very much need it. We've got the Rise Against Hunger team over here. The students from various schools across Cape Town, around Cape Town, Cape Town who've come together to pack meals. So far, I believe 1,700 oh, wow. plus meals have been counted. And I think that is just so mind blowing and it just shows you what we can achieve when we come together. This is Rice Against Hunger, and they're doing this uh, together with that one million plus wow. campaign, which is absolutely fantastic. It is a Tuesday, uh, and Tuesdays are all about health discussions. And this morning, we're talking about meningitis, which can be a very serious disease. It is sometimes hard to detect and can strike at any age. However, children and uh, adolescents can be most vulnerable to contracting meningococcal infections, and children under the age of five are at the highest risk of all age groups. So it is alarming. And the signs and symptoms of uh, meningitis, uh, they may vary from person to person, but here to tell us more and unpack this, tell us more about uh, meningitis, please welcome multimedia health specialist and our favorite, Dr. Darren Green. Good morning. Good morning. 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 morning, guys. Good morning. Maybe let's start right at the beginning. Mm, what sure. is meningitis and what is meningococcal disease? Okay, so meningitis, like all the itises, it just means inflammation, the itis part of the world, mm. word, and then meninges refers to the three layers that surround the brain. So like cling wrap wrapped around the brain tightly is the first layer called the, the pia mater and then there's another layer called the arachnoid mater and the last one, the dura, P-A-D, a pad around the brain and inflammation of those membranes around the brain yeah. is what uh, we refer to as meningitis with multiple causes that can obviously cause irritation and inflame those membranes. Mm. I think anyone who's ever heard about meningitis may have heard that there's two sort of different types of it presents in two ways. You either get bacterial or you get viral meningitis. What is the difference between these two? Sure, those, the, those are the two main groups, but there are other causes like fungal, in, fungal meningitis mm. as well, especially in HIV-affected patients. Mm. And then, uh, of course, you even get parasitic infections that can give you meningitis. You mentioned one called meningococcal. Mm -hmm. That's caused by a bacteria called Neisseria meningitidis. And then uh, another one that's quite common and one of the, the biggest causes of, of, of death is the pneumococcal, streptococcus pneumonia being the cause, yeah. bacterially. Yes. The, the, the viruses, on the other hand, enteroviruses are some of the, the, the biggest ones. You even get uh, HIV that can affect and give you meningoencephalitis. So, uh, yeah, certainly a host of bacteria, a host of, of viruses, viruses, and the most common being those two, meningococcal, pneumococcal, and some of them lead to dire consequences. Oh. I read something yesterday that um, something as bad as like toothache or bad uh, tooth can yes. actually cause meningitis. Is this true? Is that bedtime reading? <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, so an abscess, for example, can introduce infection, yeah. especially if, if, it, if it bursts and it, or it infiltrates and it's big, can enter the, the bloodstream. And then you have obviously what's called a bacteremia, which is the presence of the bacteria oh. in the blood. Mm. And then that can get to the brain in different ways. So the different ways of getting meningitis or yeah. getting the infection from other places in the body to the brain, but yeah. we'll talk about that. It does sound like there, there are many different ways in which you mm -hmm. can get meningitis, yeah. and sometimes it can be hard to find or to see uh, just by looking at, obviously. Until but it's what too are, late. Until yeah. it's yeah. too late, and that's the problem. But what are some of the signs and symptoms of meningitis that you may present with? There's a, tr a triad or triangle that we try to uh, educate people on, and it's headache, fever, yeah. and neck stiffness being the three main symptoms. Mm. So a headache is non-specific. Anyone can have a headache. Yes, any Fever day, can any be time. associated with any disease. Yeah. But the meningism or the neck st stiffness and what we call in, in clinical terms terminal neck stiffness, we ask the patient to put their chin on their chest. And as you go down right at the end, you'll feel it's really stiff and pulls because of the, ir the irritation. Right yeah. uh, also, must uh, refer to men the meninges is not just surrounding the brain, but the spinal cord as well. Oh, wow. mm. So you can get inflammation of these meninges around the brain and the spinal cord. Whoa, okay. <clears throat> well, there's a lot, it seems, to unpack when it comes to meningitis. It seems a very simple and very straightforward uh, type of uh, a situation of a, of a disease or virus, but it sounds like there is so many layers to mm -hmm. it. And we invite you to weigh in on the conversation. Join us, ask any questions to Dr. Darren Green. We'll be sure to pose them to him right here on the couch. Express All Morning Show, SABC3, as we continue with part two of our discussion. It's my feel-good breakfast show. 
Welcome back to it, you beautiful people, your feel-good breakfast show. It's Expresso on SABC3. It's a Tuesday. We're talking health. This morning, we're specifically focusing on meningitis. We've been looking at some signs and symptoms. We're joined by Dr. Darren Green. We're expanding on this conversation, looking at how to treat it. Is it even uh, uh, contagious? How to prevent it? And why children are so much more susceptible? So we invite you to weigh in. Join us in this conversation by asking any questions you may have for the good doctor on Facebook, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3, with that hashtag. Tag Express Show. Thank you so much for sticking around, Dr. Darren Green. Absolutely. You're going nowhere and you've got some oh, guests joining us over lovely. there as well. My friends, yeah. Who is more? We were speaking about this. Um, you said that kids are more susceptible, susceptible yes, yes. to get uh, meningitis. Why is that so? Normally the immune system of the child mm -hmm. is still in a development phase mm -hmm. and uh, that's why they're more prone to opportunistic yeah. infections. Yeah. 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 But luckily they're vaccinated, yes. so that helps them uh, get a pre-photo of what's to come in life yeah. and the exposure so that when they do, uh, when they are exposed, yeah. at least they've been warned and the immune system is primed for that specific uh, bacteria yeah. or virus. I'd like us to expand on the signs and symptoms because I think yes. that, that is such a layered one and a layered area to get into that it's not an easy one to just brush over. Exactly. Let's go into detail on that. Yeah, so the top, the top three symptoms, Which headache, uh, yeah. fever, and I mentioned next stiffness mm -hmm. but you can present in many ways you could just have visual disturbance you could mm. have concentration and and uh, focus and attention issues mm. you could have significant uh, uh, alteration of your memory mm. because of which part of the brain is affected as well mm. and then seizures and sleepiness fatigue uh, absolutely absolutely uh, riddled with body pain yeah. in the muscles as well and then nausea and vomiting due to the raised pressure that can occur as well in the brain, that can also be a symptom. Mm. So from GIT all the way to musculoskeletal, all the way then obviously to sleepiness and your mm. uh, level of consciousness can, can also be considered. Mm. How does one then contract this disease and is it, um, is it, can contagious. you, contagious, contagious. Yes, I was trying to get mm. the word. Yeah, so it, it, if you think about the brain, you've got the brain with these three lovely wrapped up layers around it. Yeah. So you can introduce infection to those layers around the brain by a penetrating skull wound, so a skull fracture and, yeah. and uh, infection from the environment or yeah. soil getting in there. Mm. Then you can also get it from blood, from an infection elsewhere in the body. You mentioned uh, the, a, tooth, a right? tooth abscess, abscess that's not treated. We can speak about things like sinusitis, for example, mm. as well, oh, wow. that's not treated properly. And then it can cross the blood-brain barrier. Interesting to note, however, we so wonderfully created that the, the, the blood vessels in the brain are different to the rest of the body. The, the blood-brain really? barrier uh, involves the, the lining of those blood vessels. Yeah. The cells are packed in a different way. Tight, tight junctions. Different to everywhere else different. in our body. Different. Okay. To, so that you don't allow uh, the, the passing through on the membrane of any other molecules yeah. so that the brain tissue is protected from certain uh, molecules. But it, with certain clever the bacteria, we mentioned those two meningococcal strips, yeah. you, you get them obviously tricking some of the, the, the surface antigens, mm. uh, or antibodies rather, mm -hmm. on the surface of those blood vessels, sneaking through. And that's how they cross the blood-brain barrier oh. when, you, when you obviously immunocompromise this. Yeah. Well, if you haven't got meningitis, the next question you probably have is, how do I prevent myself from getting it? Yes. Can you prevent <laughs> it and how do you do it? Well, I think the, the onus is on vaccination specifically yeah. for the the two uh, lethal causes of meningitis yeah. as a parent you're really going to regret it if your child does contract uh, meningococcal meningitis or pneumococcal meningitis yeah specifically amaphilus influenza is another one but it's also on the the immunization schedule yeah. and covered in in our schedule so firstly that's the first thing then secondly if you know that someone has had meningitis mm. they are contagious three days into into the, that and also up to about 10 days. Mm. So be aware of that too. A lot of space to contract. Yeah, and often these infections, uh, as in most cases with mm. the body, are only able to take over when your immune system drops. Yes. But early recognition, early uh, queries at, the, at your practitioner mm. to be examined, I mm. think, are very important because yeah. it's quite fast-tracked once, once that happens. So don't mm. hesitate, rather ask. Yeah, and get vaccinated, which is very important, Correct. especially with children. In fact, yeah. speaking of children, we are going to specifically delve into the issue of children. Uh, we'll look at the side effects of meningitis. We'll look at the elderly because they are also uh, can be Absolutely. compromised, their immune systems, as well as what the long-term effects are. So if you have any questions around that, please get them through to us. Thank you, Dr. Darren Green. Great. It's my feel good show. Mm. 
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So we're nearing the end of the show, but of course we still continue with our conversation, our health discussion on meningitis. We've invited you to send in any questions or comments you may have for Dr. Darren Green, who joins us this morning. And you have, who have yes. we got there? Uh, Rochelle Williams came through and she says, yeah. my daughter had bacterial meningitis. Oh, wow. She uh, struggles so much in school. She can't mm. stay focused. Please, can you recommend any herbal medicine to help her focus, please? Is this so I'm not an expert in herbal medicine unfortunately so uh, what I can tell you is that the complications of meningitis are are numerous and mm. one of them could be things like focus and attention mm. obviously your 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 brain goes through quite a, a, a lot of challenge and stress with that inflammation on the surface of yeah. the brain so uh, she would definitely benefit from seeing an occupational therapist that could help her with exercises to redevelop some of those areas that could have been harmed mm -hmm. during the infection. Uh, and a lot of them involve obviously home processes that she could do and incorporate into the class routine, but also the home routine. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. We have another comment that came through from Ntando Nkosi. She says, Doctor, you mentioned all the different types of meningitis with regards to the causative organisms. I would like to ask which of them is the most prevalent and the most fatal. Also, what sure. are the complications with regards to a child's development? Thank you. In Very advance. good question. Great question. Very so, good question. we mentioned uh, meningococcal disease. That's yes. lethal. It's marked particularly by a purple red rash. Mm. We see it associated with the altered level of consciousness, with the fever, and so forth and you we know every young doctor even as a houseman knows when they see that rash it's a purple red rash what we call a purpuric rash it's a sign you start the medication flags, immediately yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and that, that uh, person or child would need to be transferred to an ICU or high care unit mm -hmm. so that's one of the most uh, most lethal types firstly and so is pneumococcal meningitis in mm -hmm. uh, in adults as well the other one that I haven't mentioned yet is yeah. TB meningitis oh is there tuberculosis such? so TB doesn't just affect the lungs yeah it affects Obviously, the central nervous system and the spine can even affect the liver, the gut, the abdomen. So yeah. remember that TB meningitis is rife and the most common form of meningitis that we have here in the Western Cape mm. as well. Mm. Wow. So, I mean, let's talk about children. Yeah. Should parents be vaccinating their children? Should be, they getting their babies and their young children vaccinated? And what are the consequences of not vaccinating sure so if you don't uh, if you don't vaccinate your child is then obviously exposed uh, mm. to the the infection at any time yeah. uh, and then you must also remember that vaccination is only as good as the herd that's vaccinating yeah. it's called herd immunity so you have immunity and the only way we eradicated smallpox which killed millions of the world population yeah. is by vaccinating absolutely everybody everybody Ooh. that's the the emergence of resistant strains of things yeah. like polio and measles even in the UK quite recently uh. because of us not all uh, doing it so that is important uh, people always ask me what are the side effects of a vaccination yes. and the ones that are important to know about are things like know if your child has an allergy to specific things like eggs mm. some of the vac vaccinations are grown and and, and make use of, of, of uh, the protein in eggs so that's important to mention mm. uh, and then the local area where you are vaccinated either mm. on the thigh or in the arm you could have quite significant redness and swelling for a few days the child could be more irritable mm. and so forth but normally all those symptoms go within a period of five to seven days mm. completely so that's normal for anyone that has a, has a reaction locally yeah. yeah you know what this conversation could go on and on and on and it's a big one that we need Absolutely. to start paying attention to but of course we haven't got all the time with dr darren green but thank you very much for joining us pleasure you've really introduced us to the idea of going out there learning more about meningitis and also paying attention when you do see these signs and symptoms and many people can and do present with them very often and sometimes we brush them off as ah oh, she's exhausted she's tired she's not focusing she's very playful um she's Take very absent minded but sometimes it can be quite serious make sure that you learn about it and arm yourself with that information thank you so much thank Dr. you Darren green